The following broadcast is brought to you by the friends and partners of Revival Ministries International. I feel the anointing in the room tonight. Just reach out and touch the hem of his garment. I see the Holy Ghost moving across this room. Tonight, whatever you need is available in this room. This morning is going to be a very significant morning, and I'll tell you why. Even this morning as I was praying, the Lord told me certain things that are going to happen even in the next six months of your life. And I want you to understand the next six months of your life will be some of the greatest six months you've ever had. God, <laughs> I felt that. <laughs> I felt that. I think means a little drunk this morning. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to tell you <laughs> something very important. Uh, God's going to take the past five years and what you've tried and struggled to make happen in the past five years, and God's going to do it in the next six months. about you, man, what I'm going to preach this morning is what I preached uh, to my partners at the beginning of this year, and uh, it's been pretty crazy what the Lord's been doing, especially in the past three months, you know, I look at it and I just shake my head and I'm like, I'm pinching myself, because I'm like, is this even happening? Then I realize, it is, you know why? Heaps. Amen. Well, please be seated. Look at the person next to you and smile. It's always nice to see a smile. Even if your teeth are crooked, it's okay. The Lord loves you anyway. The Lord loves the good-looking people and the not-so-good-looking people. He loves them alike. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready for this morning? Yeah. 
trying to compose myself here. I've been, I've been very drunk this morning. <laughs> if, you brought, if you brought your Bibles with you, open with me the book of uh, Psalm, not the book of Palms, the book of Psalm. That's a different book. I actually broke into President Biden's library and I uh, stole that book from there. And I gave it to Dr. Rodney. It's actually a real book. It's a book all about palms, like palm trees. Amen. Psalm 23. I'm reading from the NLT. So if you can help me get out of the can, I, I can barely hear myself. Be helpful. If you can increase the bass on my mic so I can actually hear myself. Thank you. Psalm 23, we'll read um, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, and I have all that I need. I'll say that again. The Lord is my shepherd, and I have all that I need. God is going to give you everything that you need. And in fact, the Lord told me to tell you today, He's going to fulfill every dream that you've ever had. And I'm not talking about your ministry dreams. I'm talking about your personal dreams. The things that you've been dreaming about, the things that you've been wanting to happen for a long time. You've struggled, you've toiled to make it happen. But I want you to understand, it's not by your might, not by your power, It'll happen by his spirit alone. And tonight I want you to understand that the devil always keeps you busy with what you need. So in that way you can never pray about what you want. And people spend a lot of time just praying for what they need and the devil will keep you busy with that because you'll always worry about your rent and what you have to eat and what you have to drink and what you have to wear. And because of that you never really tap into all that God has for you. But God's going to take you out of the place of need and He's going to bring you to a place of financial overflow. And when I say financial overflow, I mean you will have too much. You will have more than enough. And five people said amen. That's great. The enthusiasm here is amazing this morning. Hallelujah. You're going to have more than enough. I remember <clears throat> even in uh, the past two years that I've been in America, I never, I never really came here to America thinking that God's going to give me a mi big ministry or any of that stuff. I just came here because I wanted to see America touched by the mighty hand of God. And we, be <clears throat> we began to put everything behind the gospel the past two years. And the first year we spent about $1.2 million. The second year we spent about $1.8. And last year was the best year that we ever had. And I'll tell you why. We sold $517,000 outside of our ministry to other ministries around us. Amen. Amen. And um, the Lord spoke to me towards the end of uh, 2022. He said to me, 2023 will be the greatest year that you ever had. And God spoke to me and told me, in 2023, I'm going to show you how good life is going to get. And the Lord told me to tell you tonight that 2023, God is going to show you how good life is going to get. You will literally be pinching yourself as things begin to happen in your life. You will look around you with everything that's happening around you and you'll, you'll think you're living a dream. But I want you to know it won't be a dream. It'll be God perfecting things in your life that are concerning you. Suddenly, your business will increase. Your ministry will increase. See, people think it's all about strategy. You know, we got to find out the right strategy. I had, I had a couple of pastors call me about a month ago, and uh, they started talking. They said, well, it's crazy to see what God's doing in your ministry. You must have great strategy. It's interesting how the people of God think 
that, you know, things happen because of great strategy. I promise you I'm not that smart. I know people think just because I'm, I'm Indian, I'm like very intelligent or whatever, but not really. Like Brooke sitting right here, she runs my finances. I don't even know how to write a check. And she'll attest to that. I don't even know how to wire money. I don't know anything. Like last night, I mean, we flew back from finishing a week-long um, crusade in, uh, in uh, Rowlett, Texas. And it was pretty ridiculous to see that. I mean, the place was jammed out. I mean, every night was packed out with miracle signs and wonders. It was amazing. And uh, yesterday, Pastor Rodney texted me and said, uh, so what plane are you flying on tomorrow, uh, to tonight? I said, I don't know. He's like, where are you flying out of? I don't know. So I literally don't know anything. So what, what I'm trying to tell you is I have no strategy. Zero strategy. I know people have a difficult time believing that. They keep trying to figure out what I'm trying to do. I promise you there's no strategy at all. The only thing that I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm, I may not be the best preacher on the face of the earth, nor am I the most intelligent Indian on the face of the earth. But one thing I will do for the rest of my life is I will obey you and everything that you ask me to do. <laughs> Obedience will take you further than any strategy will ever take you. And unfortunately, most people think that, you know, great strategy will give you wealth or whatever. But let me tell you, if the Lord does not breathe on what you do, it doesn't matter what strategy you have, you will never succeed. And there are other people who don't even know what they're doing half the time. And then they're succeeding all the time. For example, me. <laughs> it's true, I'm not even making that up. But today I have a word from the Lord for you, and the Lord asked me to share this with you, and I believe that what I'm about, uh, the offering message and the main message are going to go together tonight. I mean this morning. I say tonight because I'm a preacher. I'm an evangelist. I preach all the time, especially, you know, all the services are at night. So I say tonight a lot. So if I say tonight, just understand what I'm trying to say. Amen. <laughs> just give me like a long rope over here. Stop being judgmental. Only God can judge me. <laughs> And if you don't like something you say this morning, you're just racist. <laughs> well, before I get into this, I gotta tell you something that happened like four days ago. It's like four days ago I made my first ever run to Target. I'd never been to Target in my life. Yeah, okay. Oh my God. What is it, the Mecca? Like, what? why are people so offended when I say I, I've never been to Target before? I don't like shopping of any kind. I just don't. I can't stand shopping. I hate it. Amen. So, so I end up in Target, and I'm with another friend of mine. Uh, his name is Michael, and he's another Indian, you know. Boy, he's half Indian. He's a half breed. Amen. But. <laughs> So anyway, so here we are, you know, at Target, my first run to Target, and I walk into Target, the place is like, you know, I'm like, wow, this is pretty great. <laughs> and so we're recording this video, just making fun, you know. And so this guy comes around, the manager of the store comes around to me and Michael, and looks at us and says, you can't be recording in this place. And I said, well, we're just, it's just a video that we're making. He's like, well, you both need to get out of here right now. Or I'm going to kick you out personally. And I said, I, I turned over to him, looked at him, and I said, my friend, are you trying to racially profile the both of us? I said, just because we're brown? <laughs> Obviously, I was kidding, but yeah, I didn't know what else to come up with. And so the guy, the guy wouldn't look at me, you know. And I said, I said look at me. What, you don't want to look at a brown guy? Is that what this is about? <laughs> and I pointed my finger at him and I said to him, hey, listen, I'll forgive you for this. 
see how I flipped the script? So I pointed at him and said, you know, I'll forgive you for this. All you, have to, all you have to say is you're sorry. He looked at me and said, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> True story. It's a great time to be in America, amen. I don't know about white privilege, but man, boy, do you have brown privilege, you know what I mean? So. His face keeps replaying in front of me all the time, you know, so it's like, anyway, I've gotten away with more stuff than you can imagine. Okay. <laughs> Why am I telling you that? Well, the following things that I'm about to say or do this morning do not necessarily reflect on the River Church <laughs> or, or on Pastor Rodney R. Brown. Everything that comes out of my mouth is solely um, my problem. Amen. I take full responsibility for this morning. So open your Bibles with me to Ezekiel 36. Oh, by the way, if you, if many of you don't, if you don't know who I am, I just work at IT support here in, at the river. <laughs> and uh, I'm just very good at my job, you know what I mean? So that's why I wear a suit. That's another true story I'm going to talk about during the service. <clears throat> I do have a lot of racist jokes. <laughs> Amen. But let me tell you, I'm a racist across the board. It's not like I'm racist to one group. I'm racist to, towards everybody. Even my own people, I'm racist. Amen. I make fun of Indians, Hispanics. I make fun of black people, white people, yellow people, every kind of people. Amen. I give everybody equal opportunity to be offended. Amen. <laughs> That's why I told you. Whatever I say or do, I take full responsibility this morning. <laughs> Ezekiel 36, we'll read verse 22. Ezekiel 36, 22. I'm reading from the NLT. Therefore, give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I'm bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. I'm doing it to protect my holy name, on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. I will show you how holy my great name is. The name on which you brought shame among the nations, when I reveal my holiness through you before their very eyes, says the sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord, for I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. I want you to understand, when I first came here to America, the Lord spoke to me and told me. He said, for America has sold the seed of revival in the nations of the earth. I am no man's debtor, for I will bring back that very harvest to America. And that's the word of the Lord that came to me when I came, came to America the first time. But I want you to understand something. The Lord is actually at work in this nation. And in this final hour, God's going to raise up people with great wealth in their hands to fund the end time harvest. I know a lot of people want, and, and I'm not against people going to Africa or India to preach or anything like that, but let me tell you this, a lot of Americans love leaving Africa and India and go, I mean, America and going to Africa and India to preach. But let me tell you, meanwhile, they have churches of 50 people, and then they go to India or Africa and try to tell them what to do. First have results in your own country, you know what I mean? And then come down to ours. And most people only want to go to, go to the, you know, the third world nations because they want a great photo op. And unfortunately, that's been the case. And, but let me tell you this. God's not done with your own backyard. And you can't go around everywhere else and preach and, and forget about your own backyard. But God's going to raise up people who will carry the power of God in America, number one. Number two, 
There are going to be people with great wealth that will fund the end time harvest in this nation. And as God touches America, the whole world will follow suit. Verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. And, tonight, and this morning, I'm going to talk about this, and I want you to understand something very important. There are actually certain foundations that need to be laid for you to carry great wealth upon your life. See, everybody wants to be rich. But number one, your wealth has to have a purpose. And number two, I want you to understand, you can have the faith to acquire the wealth but if you do not have the character to keep it, then it means nothing. Hello. And God wants to raise up people with clean hearts who have no filth in their lives. Because I want you to understand something this morning. That if your life is filled with sin or any filth, then God cannot raise you up. He cannot entrust you with great wealth. And I'll tell you, because if you read the Bible, you'll read the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son had the faith to inherit his inheritance. But he didn't have the character to keep it. The Lord wants to bless you and wants to prosper you. But if you have no character to keep what God is giving you, then it means nothing. The Bible says the righteous will inherit the land, but the blameless will remain in it. I'll say that again. The righteous will inherit the land. Now, being righteous in right standing with God has got nothing to do with you. Jesus already paid for everything. Do you understand that? So when the minute we're saved, we're already in right standing with God. But it says the righteous will inherit the land, but the blameless will remain in it. So it's one thing to be righteous. It's another thing to live blameless so you can remain in the land which God is going to give you. Okay, five people got that. That's great. And that's why a lot of people have great faith to receive the inheritance of the promised land, but they don't have the character to keep it. Because the devil's not stupid. Hello. He might be brain damaged, but he's not stupid. And a lot of times, the little things in your life that look little now, as time goes by, the devil's going to wait for 20, 35, 40 years. And those little things he will use, not now, but when you're succeeding, when you're on top, so he can break you and make you fall. So in that way, he can take more people down with you. And that's why I tell people all the time, prosperity and holiness are connected. Be holy as I am holy. So it's very important to live a filthless life. Amen. I'm trying to lay a foundation. The good part is still coming. And I'm going to, like, give it a little time. I'm going to lay the foundation down first. Verse 26. And I will give you a new heart, and I'll put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony and stubborn heart and give you a tender and responsive heart. Now read that, tender and responsive. The only way you're going to have a, a responsive heart is an obedient heart. A lot of people have great strategy, but they cannot seem to obey God. And it's very difficult for people to obey God because when God asks you to do something, it's always beyond your ability to do it. Because if it were in your ability, then you wouldn't need God. Hello. So everything that God's going to ask you to do, even in 2023, is going to seem like it's going to be beyond your ability. But it's not beyond His ability. You understand that? And he's going to catapult you into what he has for you. 
as long as you're willing to obey and do exactly that which is asked you to do, asked you to do. and don't be afraid. Because one of the greatest things the devil will use to stop you from stepping into what God has for you is fear. And that's why most people can't give because they're filled with fear. And when you have nothing, it's very easy to give. You have like 50 bucks. You know, you give 50 bucks. Oh, well, I gave everything I had away. Because 50 bucks is not your safety net. It's not going to take care of anything. But a day starts to come when you have like 10,000 in the bank. Then you have 100,000 in the, in the bank. Then you have a million in the bank. As the Lord begins to incre increase you, will you continue to be faithful with that which he has given you? And so a lot of people can't step into the next realm because let me tell you, every realm that God wants to take you into comes with the next level of obedience and sacrifice. Most people are stuck at the level that they're at. It's because they've never been able to step out of the place that they're in into a place that God wants them to be because of fear. But I want you to understand the same God who provided for you yesterday will be the same God that provides for you today. And the same God that provides for you today will be the same God that provides for you tomorrow. Unfortunately, a lot of people think like adults when you need to start thinking like children. I wonder if your kids ever wake up in the morning and worry. Hey, mommy, do we have enough food this morning from breakfast? They don't care. They'll walk up and demand things from you because they know their father and mother will provide. If you earthly parents being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more the heavenly father? And a lot of people can't enjoy what God has given them also because of fear. The Bible actually says, hoarding riches harms the saver. Scripture, Ecclesiastes, go read it. And I'm not saying saving is wrong, but let me tell you this. Most people can save all the money they want to save and then get hit by a Mack truck tomorrow. What does that mean? Nothing. But instead of hoarding your riches, how about you bless the people around you? How about you show the people that you love how much you love them while you're alive? How about you put your finances behind the kingdom of God and get the job done? so that your reward will be great when you get to heaven. Amen. People don't understand, it's not just about what you have here today, but there's an eternity that you're living for right now. And you're gathering up your reward while you're here on the earth. And that's why for me, it's not difficult to give, and I don't even struggle to give, because I know I'm not just living for here, I'm living for eternity. I remember when uh, I was in India, I was with this, uh, I, was doing, I was doing this crusade and I drove down and the Lord had blessed me with a BMW 7 Series, amen, while I was in India. I know people think, yeah, hey, they got rich when they got over here. No, I was rich when I, got, when I was in India, amen. The Lord just doubled everything when I got here, that's all. So, and I wasn't driving some like, you know, 7 Series, that's like 20, 2009, you know, just broken down or anything. Like, it, was, it was basically brand new and it was bulletproof. Amen. <laughs> so, my car pulls up in the, in, into the crusade, and I was wearing a nice suit and whatever, and I got out of the car, and I was getting into the green room, and there was this uh, Hindu guru that was in, the, in that crusade, and he looked at me from head to toe like that. And he said to me, you're very well dressed for a man that says who's, you serve God. I looked at him and I said, maybe your God doesn't pay you, mine does. <laughs> and so, I'm not going to apologize. If you want to wear ugly clothes, that's your problem. Amen. Okay, anyway, moving on from that. <clears throat> a lot of people offended in the back. Amen. <laughs> and then he looked at me and he said, 
because he was well versed. You know, he, he looks at me and he says, you know, doesn't it talk about in, in, in Mark chapter 10 that, that Jesus told the rich young ruler, give everything away and come and follow me. And he said, aren't you supposed to give everything away? And I said, yes, I've been trying to give everything away for a very long time. But every time I give everything away, he keeps giving me more. What do you want me to do about it? If you broke, you're probably following the wrong God. A horrible one. Like four arms and six legs and three noses and anyway. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> Obedience will take you further. Verse 28. And you will live in Israel, the land I gave your ancestors long ago. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will cleanse you of your filthy behavior. And I will give you good crops of grain. And I will send no more famines on the land. Good crops of grain. And no more famines. This year will be a terrible year for the people of the world. They're going to struggle. There's going to be a financial collapse. People are already losing jobs in the hordes. But it might be the worst time in the world for the world. But for the people of God, this will be the best year that you ever had. You will walk, you will walk in financial realms to such a great extent that people around you will look at you and say, my God, they must be doing something illegal. <laughs> People already think I'm doing something illegal. People are going to look at you and wonder, how are they so blessed? How are they so rich? I remember in December, we, st we did, I mean, in 2022, we did about $1.8 million in total. I mean, not too bad for, this, for our second year in the ministry. Amen. But then the Lord spoke to me and said, I'm going to accelerate everything quickly. And so I, and I, I, I didn't imagine what was going to happen. Because sometimes, you know, you know God's going to do something, but then you don't know how it's going to happen. I was talking to Evangelist Jonathan, and uh, he was talking about, he, said, he was telling me, great job this year, you know, whatever. And I said to him, I said, well, it's great. I just don't know how any of it happened. And I pray that God does it again. And if people ask me, well, how did it happen? I genuinely will tell you, I do not know. I have no clue how any of this is happening. So people ask me, like, you know, can you tell me? What do you want to tell you? I don't know anything myself. <laughs> and so we stepped into December. And uh, December, we, between December, let's say, 27th, around that time, to mid-January, the Lord accelerated so quick, us so quickly that we literally brought into the ministry over $400,000 in a span of 30 days. Wow. And this last week was another crazy week for us. And between December and March, We've already brought in over $600,000 into the ministry. And we'll already be at a million by the time we're finished with April. That's, that's not even four months. That's what my entire income was when I, the first year I came to America. What am I trying to tell you? Well, if God can bless a skinny brown Indian like me, whose name most people can't even pronounce. Not even some of your best friends in the world. <laughs> if God can do it to me, he can do it to anybody. And I feel like that's why God picked me, because he wanted to say, well, if I can do it for that guy, 
And most people don't even know my name when I go, for, go out for crusades. They're like, that, that, that brown Indian guy. <laughs> well, I'll take it, you know. But that's what the Lord's already done. And I, I, I literally don't know how it's happened. The only thing that I know I can tell you is the key. And that's why I talk about it all, all the time, is obedience. I, I was with a millionaire once, a multimillionaire actually. And that week, the Lord had pushed me to sow $100,000 into, you know, into this ministry. And, uh, and I'll get, get in that story in a bit, but I remember about eight years ago, when I first came here to the river at Tampa Bay Church, I had nothing. We'd spent all our money on crusades, and we always went from debt to debt and more debt to more debt. And that's just how we were taught to live, because apparently evangelists are supposed to live in debt. And I wasn't taught any better. And so we just lived that way. And then Dr. Rodney called me and said, I want you to come and spend some time with me at the conference. And I had no money to get to the conference. All I had in my bank was basically nothing. Amen. And then I had an American Express credit card that was almost maxed out. And when Dr. Rodney told me to come over, the ticket cost me like $5,000. So I paid for the ticket. Now I'm like minus $5,000. And so I got here to the river. I was sitting right there on that seat. And Dr. Rodney opened 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And so he began to read the scripture, and it hit me. And I told the Lord, Lord, give me seed to sow. Because I literally had no seed to sow. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I literally had nothing. Like zilch. Didn't even have one dollar left. And miraculously, God gave me seed. And in f five minutes after me saying that, somebody texted me and said, we, you know, they, they sent us like a couple of thousands of dollars, which was huge for me at that time. And uh, I'm sitting in the front row, and the Lord told me and spoke to me and said, I want you to give everything away. I said, God, that really sucks. <laughs> like for the first time in my life, I have some cash in my hand. Now you want me to give everything away? And I sat there and I gave everything away. Now I'm frustrated with myself. And I'm like, God, this, you know, you know, this is the quickest I've ever been rich and got poor, like, in a moment. <laughs> so I give everything away. And as Jonathan was here as well, and I, I sold some into him, and I gave, like, basically gave everything away. Now back to zero dollars. I went to the Hilton Garden Inn, sat there, and I was, like, hungry. I was like, man, I don't even have food to eat. Yeah, you got that right. I walked in there, and I said, well, I walked in, picked up some honey buns, and ate honey buns. So for the next five days of the conference, I just sat there and ate honey buns. It was pretty miserable. Amen. It's not a great way to live. But I remember sitting there in the front row that day, I, I told the Lord, I said, God, if ever you give me $100,000, and I had that in the bank, I will give it away without a second thought. See, when you're poor, you make a lot of promises. <laughs> it's very easy. When you're broke, you know, like, I'm going to give you a million dollars one day when I have it. <laughs> it's easy to talk about when you're broke. You broke. And it seems like an impossibility even to have 100000 or a million dollars in the bank. So I just made that promise. I didn't even think, God, I'm going to give you $100,000 and I have $100,000 in the bank. And so, you know, long story short, I, you know, some of you probably know the story anyway, I'm, so I'm not going to get into it, but the Lord blessed me, and I, you know, came to the United States, and we, we increased, and whatever, now we have like 14 people on staff, we have a 4,800 square foot office building in Lakeland, I mean, the Lord's been good to me, amen, and I can, no, I can take no credit for it whatsoever. So... <laughs> So I made that promise to God, and, and I remember this was about a year and a half ago. I was sitting in the same seat. Dr. Rodney pulls out the same scripture. I'm sitting there, and as Dr. Rodney's talking about something, in my spirit I felt, Ankit, you need to sow $100,000 now. I slowly open my bank account. Made sure nobody saw. Because people in the back always kind of try to peep into your phone, you know, when you're trying to... <laughs> So, true story. You know who you are. 
I have eyes in the back of my head. No. So, so I'm sitting there. I'll open my bank account, and I, have a, I literally have $100,000 in the bank. That's it. Nothing else. 100 k that's it. And you know, you're like, yes, I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, well, well. Like, God, you know, I have a crusade coming up, like, next week, and I'm going to, like, New Jersey to preach. You're sending me to the armpit of America. And I love people in New Jersey, Amen. Hallelujah. And they love me, and we love each other. Amen. But we all know it is what it is. So, no offense to the people from New Jersey, okay? I had some of the greatest meetings out there. So, jeez. <laughs> oh, <sighs> I love you, Dr. Rodney. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> So I'm like, God, I have a crusade coming up in New Jersey, and thankfully we had paid for most of it, but we still had, like, pastors and leaders coming in from, from everywhere to attend the crusade. And so I had, to, I, decided, I had to pay for their hotels and everything. So we flew into, New, I mean, we're about to fly to New Jersey. I'm sitting there and said, God, you know, that's, that's literally all I have left. The Lord speaks to me and says, that's all I want. I said, excuse me? You don't understand. That's all I have left. That's all I want. Sitting there frustrated with myself, I thought to myself, well, I rebuke every foul spirit of Leviathan that's speaking to me right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every devil that I knew, every flaky preacher ever, pre you know, preached against. I casted every devil out. I thought it was like me, my flesh, but I rebuked everything I could. The voice wouldn't go away. And the Lord reminded me and said to me, eight years ago, seven years ago back then, seven years ago you made a promise to me. And he said, if you had $100,000, you would sow it. And the Lord spoke to me and said, you were not specific with how much you had in your bank. <laughs> so now I've realized, be more specific with God next time. He holds you to your word. <laughs> So now I'm sitting there with just 100 grand in the bank. And I said, well, Lord, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll think about it. I know, I know, I know. I was pretty disappointed with myself later too. But anyway, so after having lunch with Dr. Rodney, again, the Lord speaks to me, $100,000. I said, God, I'll wake up in the morning and think about it. I woke up in the morning. Again, the Lord speaks to me. I want you to reserve $100,000. I said, Lord, You know, you don't have to speak to me the fourth time. I'm going to do it. I'm sorry for being an idiot. I apologize. One thing about me, if I'm an idiot, I'll just admit that I'm an idiot. I, I have no problem. I have like zero pride. I'll be like, yeah, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm a dummy. Amen. And so I called Victoria Brooke. She has multiple names and multiple personalities. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. But like she, you know, she, her, her name is Victoria Brooke. So, but we call her Brooke and she calls herself Victoria. So she has multiple names, so whatever, anyway. I'm just telling you that because if I get the names mixed up, you know who I'm talking about, this lady right here. So it's run broke around my whole ministry, my finances and everything. So I'm sitting, and so I, I'm sitting in my bed, and I called Victoria, and I said, hey, um, I need you to write me a check of $100,000. She said, what? Because she knows what's in the bank, you know what I mean? She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, $100,000. She's like, she's like, Okay. And so she brings a check over to me. She, signs, she, I mean, she basically fills it up and gives it to me, and I, I sign the check. And now the check has no name on it. So she looks at me and she goes, you forget everything everywhere. You lose everything all the time. This check does not have a name on it. She's like, I need to put a name on that thing. I said, well, yeah, yeah, well it's fine. It'll be fine. I'll figure out what name I'm going to put on it. And she's like, no, you should probably. I said, stop telling me what to do, woman. I know what I'm doing. Leave it alone. <laughs> so I took the check and I put it in my jacket pocket like that. And I came to the river, parked outside. And for five minutes, five, ten minutes, I couldn't find the check. My grandmother would always tell me, Ankit, if your behind was not attached to you, you would leave that behind wherever you go. I break that confession off of my life in Jesus' name. Anyway. Well, anyway, she's dead, so it's fine. 
Woods. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. At least she got saved, you know what I mean? So. I know, I know. You didn't expect it this morning when you walked in here. So. <laughs> so I couldn't find the check, and like 15 minutes later, I find the check. And I, and I pull it out, and I basically like, you know, I'm like, praise God, I found the check. It was like in the seat. Somehow, like, I didn't put it in the right place and just, you know, whatever. So I took the check out, and um, I walked straight into Dr. Rodney's office. Walked right there, took the check, put, put your hand up put the check in his hand, and I walked right out. Went straight into the bathroom. Looked at myself in the mirror and said, you idiot! <laughs> Somebody asked me after that, did you feel the anointing come on you like when you gave the money away? No. I just felt $100,000 lighter. And I think I also had too much coffee, so there's a bit, little bit of anxiety there, too. And I didn't want to look at the bank account for the rest of the couple of days that we had before New Jersey. We flew into New Jersey with minus something thousand dollars in the bank. Overdraft. Anyway. <laughs> so, anyway, so when, coming back to, I was talking with a businessman. He thought I forgot where I was. I didn't know. I know exactly where I'm going with a story. That businessman, I sold the $100,000 seat and I walked right after that. I walked up to him and I looked him in the eye and I said, you know, ministers and evangelists give more than business people do. And then people have a problem when a minister flies in a private plane because he's blessed. If you only gave the way a, way a minister gives, you probably would be just as blessed. And so needless to say, three weeks later, he sold $100,000 right after that. Amen. Not into my ministry, you know, back to the river, but, but what am I trying to tell you? Your giving should be so great that inspires the people around you. Are you listening to me? Every time you give, you have to make a statement to, to, to the devil and to God to show him how much you trust him. And let me tell you, our ministry broke out after that $100,000. We went to a whole new level. Our crowds broke out. Our finances broke out. Everything just went to a whole new level. I didn't feel anything at that moment, but I know in the spirit realm, everything had changed. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all. The love of money is. And the reason people fear to give it away is because if they give it away, they have nothing left. And they're worried about what's going to happen tomorrow then if you're worried about what's going to happen tomorrow when you give everything away, then you're saying, God, I don't trust you. I trust the money that I have in the bank more. Hello. Are you listening to me today? And we've been that way ever since. And I'm telling you, we've never looked back. I mean, we've sold some of the, I mean, this year already we've spent, we've probably already sold like thousands and thousands of dollars already. I'm telling you this because I, 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 I know what God's about to do in your life. And what's, what God's about to put into your hands is so great and so big that if your heart is not in the right place, you won't be able to handle it. Let me try that side over there. Very hostile on the right side. Amen. I will give you good crops of grain and I will send no more famines on the land. I will give you great harvests from your fruit trees and fields and never again will the surrounding nations be able to scoff at you or your land at its famines. Then you will remember your past sins and despise yourself for all the detestable things that you do. One of the things I'll tell you about the blessing of the Lord and the blessing of the Lord comes upon your life. And you start to see financial increase, you start to realize, God, I actually don't deserve any of these things. But you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. It's been so good. Hallelujah. 
It's been so good. So, so good. If you, do, you, do you not think that if he did what he did for you, provided for you before, you think he won't do it again? So why do you fear to give? I give like there is no tomorrow. Because there might be no tomorrow. I was talking to Dr. Rodney a couple of days ago. I was uh, in Texas. He, I was telling him everything that's going on. And he, he says to me, he's like, you know, sometimes when you give, I, I was praying for you and I was worried about you. I said, why? He said, well, sometimes I feel like you gave everything away. And I was just praying. He said, God, help this little Indian. <laughs> but he said to me, clearly, clearly it's working for you. It really is. Verse 33. This is what the sovereign Lord says. When I cleanse you from your sins, I will repopulate your cities. And the ruins will be rebuilt. This year in 2023, God is going to rebuild everything that was ruined in your life in the name of Jesus. And it will be a quick work. Whatever the devil stole from you, God is going to restore it to you a hundredfold in the name of Jesus. Tonight, the devil's hand comes off of your finances in Jesus' name. You mark my words today. And you mark it clearly. Six months from today, you will look back at this moment and say, this day, everything changed. <laughs> That's not even the best part. <laughs> We've not even gotten the best part yet. The ruins, and when I say ruins, I mean every area of your life. Amen. Financially, emotionally, mentally, physically. Your family. And I kid you not. Yeah. And I was praying about this. And let me tell you, I was at the stand. This was probably two, two and a half years ago. I was preaching at the stand. There's a little Chinese lady sitting in the back, second row. Walked up to her. I said, Mama, come over here. She stood up. I looked at her and I said, God's going to restore your son back to you. Didn't even know who she was. And she said, how is that going to happen? I looked at her and I said, just believe. I said, God's going to send an angel of the Lord to your son right now. And is going to bring him back to you. And a couple of days later, I'm walking in the lobby. She grabs a hold of me and she says, 
that night after you said that, my son, I think, was in a, something like she was in a bar or something like that, and said, my son was in the bar, and he saw an angel stand in front of him, looked at him and said, go back to your mother. And that night, he came back to his mother. The Lord will send an angel to bring back everything that was stolen from you in the name of Jesus. Even last week, on Sunday, I was preaching on Sunday night. And Israel and Brooke will tell you that the lady was there in the service. I called her out and I said, God's going to restore your family. And here's what happened. Her son was wrongly imprisoned and was sentenced to 25 years in prison. And they had a hearing the next day. And when they got to the court, the judge looked at the son and said, you're free to go. And that young man came back to his mother the very next day. What am, I, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you, be not afraid to do what God asks you to do. It will not be by your might or by your power. It will be by his spirit. Verse 34, the fields that used to lie empty and desolate in plain view of everyone will again be farmed. And when I bring you back, Sydney, when I bring you back, louder, when I bring you back. When I bring you back, when I bring you back. When I bring you back. So who's going to do the bringing back? What do you have to do? See, there's always an action and there's a reaction. When you act, he reacts. That's why 2 Corinthians 9, 6 talks about that too. For he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. For God gives seed to the sower, bread for food, supplies and multiplies the seed that you've sowed, and increases the fruits of your righteousness. He gives you the seed to sow. Are you listening to me? And when you sow the seed, he multiplies the seed. So everything is an action and there's a reaction to it. So he will bring you back. I love this is my favorite part. And this is going to be your story. Now, and the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. You will look back in the next six months, and the people around you will look back. Are you ready for this? If, the, if this doesn't hit you, then I don't know what to say. You need like a deliverance service after this. Join healing school or something. I sent Pastor Ryan a picture of a la uh, uh, message of a lady that sent me some message, and I said, I'm sending her to healing school to you to hang out with you. She was pretty crazy. Amen. <clears throat> I can't even read this. <laughs> every time I read this, because I know this is the word of the Lord for 2023, and every time I read this, it gets me so drunk. Because I know what you can do. And I've seen it with my eyes. I've seen it. I've seen it with my eyes.
35. And when I bring you back, people will say, this former wasteland is now like the Garden of Eden. No, you don't understand. The word Eden means perfect condition. God is going to make your life perfect. He's going to make your finances perfect. He's going to make your family perfect. Everything that concerns your life shall look like that of the Garden of Eden. Verse 36. Yeah. <laughs> this gets to me. Woo. Six months from today. Six months. The abandoned and ruined cities now have strong walls and are filled with people. Then the surrounding nations that survive will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt the ruins and replanted the wastelands, for I, the Lord, have spoken. I, 
the Lord have spoken, and I will do what I say. I, the Lord, have spoken. the Lord, not you, I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do what I say. You will look back in six months, and you will say, he did what he said. 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 He what he said. In fact, he's doing it right now. It's happening. I hear the flap, flap, flap of the raven's wings, bringing the silver, the gold, and everything. The windows of heaven is going to pour you out a blessing where you have no room to receive. Your storehouses are too small to receive what is about to come. For I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. We're just getting started this morning. See, man's plans always fail. And that's why you have to step into, into a place of obedience and say, God, I will do whatever you tell me to do. Whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Most people live in fear their whole lives. That's when they can See, everybody wants to be where we are, but nobody wants to do what we did. If everybody could do it, do it it'd be a piece, it, then, then, you know, if it were a piece of cake, then everybody would have done it. But everybody can't do it. Why? Because most people live in fear. This morning is going to be a morning where you step out of that fear. Like Pastor Rodney says, <laughs> when you step out on, on the water, you burn the boat. With God, you go all the way. You don't realize it right now, but I, I, in my spirit, I see it coming together. In 
And many of you will be shaking your head. People around you will be shaking their head. They'll be looking at you, and they're going to be like, how? 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 How this happening? How this happening? How? How? Tell me how. I don't know how. Tell me. Tell me how. How is this happening? How? How is this happening? How? Tell me. Tell me how. I don't. How, how is this happening to you? And he will say, not by my might, not by my power, but by his spirit alone. When you follow the Holy Ghost, when you obey him in everything that you do. And let me tell you, even your giving is not what you can do. He will ask you to do more than what your ability is so that he can bring in what is beyond your ability. Do you understand that? He asks you to do more than your ability so he can bring in more than what is your ability to do. I don't know about you, but I preached myself happy this morning. Verse 37. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm ready to hear Israel's prayers and increase their numbers like a flock. Let me tell you, this church is on track for 10,000 people. It's going to be like that. They will be as numerous as sacred flocks that fill Jerusalem streets at the time of her festivals. The ruined cities will be crowded with people once more, and everyone will know that I am the Lord. See, when God blesses you, people are going to know he is the Lord. He will show himself off through you. He's going to make you a billboard of his blessing. Because I'm not out there looking for blessing. The blessing's out looking for me. I'm not out there looking for money. Money's out looking for me. You know, we one more scripture before we receive this morning's offering, then we're going to do everything else, but... Is it helping you today? Ecclesiastes 2, 26. God gives wisdom and knowledge and joy to those who please him. Those who please him. How do you please him? By obeying him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy... God takes the wealth away, and he gives it to those who please him. He takes their wealth away, and God gives it to the ones that please him. God is going to give it to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to read one more scripture. I'm an evangelist. You know what I mean? You give me the pulpit, and I'm just going to like. There are, lots, there, are, there, are, there are a lot of miracles that happen in my ministry. One of the greatest miracles that happens is when I say it's going to be a minute. A minute can be longer than 60 seconds. Amen. Second Kings chapter 7. And we know the story. The famine was so great that two women wanted to kill their children and eat them. Dove droppings were sold for silver. Dove droppings. That means dove poop. They were eating dove poop. That's how bad the famine was. Okay. 
Are you offended that I said poop? I don't know. Well, I can't believe you said poop. Okay. And you know the story. Then Elisha, the king wants to kill Elisha. And Elisha comes to see the king. This is what happens. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel. And two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer in whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. There's some people in this room that are like, Well, I don't know how that's going to happen. But in the natural, it doesn't look like that can happen. My life really sucks right now. I'm going through a season. You're going through a season because you is a dummy. <laughs> Do you know why Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden? Disobedience. If you're in a season of wilderness, which while some people seem like they're always in a season of wilderness, every time you hear the, oh God, I'm going to such a difficult time right now, you know, my life like really sucks, it's been 15 years, you know, I can't, one day God will get me through this. You put yourself there. The Israelites were in the wilderness, why? Disobedience. God didn't want them there. God's will for your life is to live in perfection. And there's probably some of you that say, well, you know, how could, could, if the Lord will make the windows of heaven, could this thing be? And he said, in fact, you shall see with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. You will not have whatever you criticize. If you're sitting there trying to criticize the words that are coming out of my mouth today, then you will not taste it. But if you believe, if you believe, you will eat the good of the land. If you believe, if you believe, and we know what happens, God used four multimillionaires to provide for them. Just check it if you actually read your Bible. Anyway, <laughs> Second Kings chapter seven, verse three. Now there were four leprous men. What did God use? Lepers. Verse 18, so it happened just as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, two seers of barley for a shekel and two seers of fine flour for a shekel should be sold to more about this time the gate of Samaria. Then the officer who had answered the man of God and said, now look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could such a thing be? And he had said, in fact, you'll see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat, eat of it. So it happened to him, for the, for the people trampled him in the gate, and he died. That, that, that took a turn. What have I told you? Many of you will see it in six months, the fulfillment of it. Are you listening to me? And many of you, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, everything will and shall be different in the name of Jesus. I speak increase. By this time tomorrow. So right now, every eye be closed across the room and every head be bowed. May the Lord God himself speak to you exactly that which you need to do this morning. I want to challenge everybody in this room. The way the Lord challenged me to do something significant. Even as I was preaching to you this whole time, the Lord continually spoke to you. And many of you, the Lord speaking, has been speaking to you for weeks and even months to do something significant, yet you hold on to it. See, that step of faith 
is a step out of fear. And when you step out of fear, you'll step into the place that God has for you. The promise is just a step away. There are many people in this room that have never done a thousand dollars or more. There are many in this room that have never done ten thousand dollars or more. There are many in this room that can do a hundred thousand, even a million dollars this morning. How about you put your money behind the kingdom of God and you'll see what the Lord will do? And this morning, when you give, everything will change your home, your family, your finances. Because let me tell you, giving is about obedience. If you can't obey God with your giving, you won't obey him with anything else. For the next flow that God's going to send you into, God's going to ask you for something greater than, you, than you've ever done before. And I'm going to read this even as your eyes are closed. Ecclesiastes 5. As you enter the house of God, keep your ears open and your mouth shut. It is evil to make mindless offerings to God. Don't make rash promises and don't be hasty in bringing matters before God. After all, God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. Too much activity gives you restless dreams. Too many words make you a fool. When you make a promise to God, don't delay in following through. For God takes no pleasure in fools. Keep all the promises you make to him. It is better to say nothing than to make a promise and not keep it. Don't let your mouth make you sin and don't defend yourself by telling the temple messenger that the promise you made was a mistake. That would make God angry and he might wipe out everything you've achieved. And I'm grateful to God that I'm, the promise that I made to him eight years ago, I kept it. And if I had not, then I probably wouldn't be here today. I, I know I wouldn't be here. Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. The Lord of heaven's army says to the priest, the son honors his father and the servant respects his master. If I'm your father and master, where the honor and respect I deserve? You've shown contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? You've shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifice on my altar. That means you've not given your best. When you have it in your ability to do something significant and you don't do it, you're offering a defiled sacrifice on the altar, and God does not accept that. Because the value of the gift that you give directly correlates the value of how much you value God. You defile them by saying the altar of the Lord deserves no respect when you give blind animals a sacrifice. Isn't that wrong? And is it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased? Try giving gifts like that to your governor and see how pleased he is, says Lord of Heaven's armies. Go ahead. Beg God to be merciful to you. But when you bring that kind of an offering, why should he show you any favor at all? Asks the Lord of heaven's armies. How I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so his worthless sacrifice could not be offered. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and I will not accept your offerings. But Malachi chapter 3, that was disobedience, but now it's obedience. Now the result of the obedience I am the Lord, and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not yet destroyed. Ever, ever since the days of your ancestors, you have scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. Now return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you ask, how can we return when we've never gone away? Should people cheat God, yet you have cheated me? But you ask, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you? You've cheated me of the tithes and the offerings due to me. You are under curse for your whole nation has been cheating me. Bring all the tithes in the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. And if you do, says Lord of Heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. And I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Your crops will be abundant for I will guard them from insects and disease. Your grapes will not fail, fall from the vine before they're ripe, says Lord of Heaven's armies. And all the nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of his armies. This morning is a morning when you're going to break your alabaster jar. 
do something significant that you've never done before. There are people that are watching us around the world right now. Even in the United States, the Lord's been speaking to you to stand with this great ministry. I don't know any other ministry. I've been around many ministries that goes after souls the way they do. With what's happening in this church and with this church is so great that God is setting this up as a hub for revival for the nations of the earth. It's like, it's like an ark is being built here right now. You may not realize, but it's like an ark that's being built. The next phase is coming up. There are people that are watching us right now. You can, you can drop $100,000 now, and it won't, even, it, it won't even hurt you to do it. I want to remind the rich that are watching me today. Tonight, if you die, your money will die with you, and you will take nothing with you to heaven. But today, if you take a leap of faith and put your money behind the gospel and the kingdom of God, you will reap eternal rewards. I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to you. You're watching me right now. You've been watching us for a long time. There are people that are watching that can drop a million dollars today. Obey the voice of the Lord. You feel that churning in your spirit and in your heart. You know I'm talking to you. You know, the people that have never done something, today is that day when you do something significant. Hear my words and hear my words carefully. For I do not speak as an ordinary man. I speak on the unction of the Most High God. And that which I've spoken is going to come to pass for everyone under the sound of my voice. Not one word that ever comes out of my mouth ever falls to the ground. So hear the word of the Lord. Tomorrow by this time, everything will change. So when the Lord speaks to you exactly that, we should do. If you have two numbers in your heart, it's always the bigger one. If two numbers keep bothering you, put them together and give it all away. And many of you, the Lord's speaking to you to do something significant, and you're saying, that's all I have. And God's telling you, that's all I want. You might say, Ben's done, kids. Well, how do I know what's my seed? Every seed that you ever bite into is always bitter. When you look at what you have, it makes you bitter. It's your seed. Give it away. Put it in the ground and see what the Lord will do. Thank you for watching today on YouTube. Please press the subscribe button and also the notification button and like and get the word out so others can watch.